healed. Then he started moving and waving his hands and popping his back like he had the Holy Ghost. Then Lady Lazarus started coughing. He waved his hands again. Then she coughed a little bit louder. I said, oh, sh <laughs> he healing her for real. <laughs> I started believing in myself. All hail to the Raku. Season five, episode number two of Tyler Perry's Ruthless. It opened with one of the cult members calling for her daughter, Olivia. And Obadiah had to warn her that her daughter is no longer her daughter, that they all now belong to the Raku. She got a bit hysterical. So the highest told Ruth to handle her. Quote unquote. So Ruth got up and tried to remove her from the situation, but she told Ruth no. So Ruth slapped her, rattled them jaws a little bit. She made her apologize to the highest, and then she took her outside of the pavilion and talked to her for a minute. Ruth is pretty much satisfied with the children just being back on the compound, but this lady is hurt. She said that the children are now all brainwashed. Ruth told her to keep her eyes opened and her mouth shut because she was going to try to get the children away from Obadiah. And I like this character Obadiah so far, not for what he stands for so much, but just the fact that he is so matter of fact. He doesn't mince his words and he appears to be pretty stern. So this fresh face is pretty solid. So the highest continued his long drawn out ridiculous speech, telling them all that he's gonna remember all the faces of those who stood by him. And Lacey found this to be pretty amusing. And to me, this is just the first sign of her losing it and there may be many more incidents that this character is going to experience before pouring the gasoline all over her body which is what we saw in the season trailer in our next scene we see ruth walking through the compound and she noticed the children outside playing so she stopped to take a look after all she hasn't seen them on the compound in a long time then obadiah walked up and he asked her what do you think the highest would say if he knew that you were here to check on your daughter and ruth said i don't have a daughter and right here here is where I really appreciated having new characters, new perspectives, new goals. We gotta watch him though. He's a slick one. But Ruth was just as witty as he was and just as swift with her words. So he not just gonna run all over her and he knows it. Then we see the highest pacing the floor, worried because of everything that's going on. He doesn't think that the cult members are learning their lesson. He feels that everyone is ungrateful. He gives them everything, but they still put guns to his head. So this is frustrating him quite a bit. He's also frustrated about the cartel being back looking for Lilo. So he needs some of that magic to keep his mind at peace. So Daikon is getting it ready for him so that he can get some rest. Then back at the police station, which is progressively becoming the FBI headquarters, we see them pull in Keys, right? Who's clearly upset. And we also see Aaron, who's equally upset because they're returning from the compound without Laura, his wife, coming back with them. Desiree had to break the bad news of Laura no longer being alive. So she told him that she got caught in the crossfire. And the, of course, this pissed him off. Disloyalty will be paid with death. This is the new order of doing things. Daikon has spoken and that's that. I also noticed that Daikon is reclaiming his authority, smelling his nuts, ruling with an iron fist. You know, you can't tell him anything. He said that there's a new order and you better follow it or you're going to pay for it with your life. He instructed everybody to move the casualties to protect the highest from having to see them lying all over the place with their guts all open, <laughs> spilling on the ground. And one of the soldiers, Sammy, straight up told Daikon, listen, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to move these bodies because I don't like the smell of blood. And he felt himself getting sick. So here comes Savior Peter creeping from behind the bush and told Daikon that he'd do it. And Daikon was like, looky, looky, what do we have here? Daikon remembers that Peter ran away from the camp last season, right? But Peter was able to put his Ruth hat on and finesse Daikon into believing that he just couldn't live without the highest. He told him that he was running through the woods and he was gone for about three, four, five days. Then his feet got tired, his head was hurting and his stomach was growling. So he came back to the camp because he realized that he could not live without worshiping the highest. Really? <laughs>
<laughs> he even took it upon himself and shot one of the traitors. So we now know who put the bullet in Bridget's head. It was Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater here. And he didn't say all of that, but y'all know me, I gotta be extra with it. So Daikon told him right then and there that he was forgiven. And just like that, he's able to keep his rifle, he can still protect the highest, and he can still be considered loyal. See, the trick with Daikon is that you just have to come up with a good enough lie, then you're back in the game, that's all. Then here comes Manny, talking about he want to rededicate himself to the church. <laughs> he want to get a chance to show himself approved by serving the Raku in any way that he can. Just a boatload of hogwash. <laughs> get out of here. Then we see Zane at the water pump asking River if he's seen Lacey. And why does Zane feel like she's her guardian? She feels like she has to protect Lacey. I don't know. I mean, she may be right because we saw from the trailer that Lacey is gonna lose it. So River is explaining to her that he has to get in good with the highest because he thinks that Manny is gonna snitch on him about how he found them in the woods trying to get away. And I just feel that if Manny was gonna tell, he would have said something long before now. And they refer to their freedom as being like tater tots and cotton candy. Moving on to our next scene, Ruth went to ask Peter where all the casualties were moved to, and he told her that Daikon had moved them to the woods so that the highest didn't have to see them. Then he tried to give Ruth a hard time about going in to see the highest, but then the highest came out and got her, and then he let her know that he'd been thinking about her. And then he also told her that Obadiah told him about her going to the yard to see the children. She told him that she only went there to see how he got them to behave so well. Then he took her to the punishment trailer where George and Lewis were hanging out. He decided to show Ruth instead of telling her just how Obadiah brainwashed, uh, I mean, train the children. And he does this through audio tapes and videos where his voice is playing over and over and over until they start to believe whatever it is that he's saying. And because they lost so many men in the shootout that instead of killing them, he decided to reprogram their minds so that they can become more loyal, which makes sense. Whoever wrote these two concepts together, it was genius because now we see the critical reasoning behind all the punishment trailers. Then the highest put on some Don Giovanni and he turned it up so that it'll play throughout the entire compound. It got on Elder Mother's nerves, but it didn't bother Zane at all. Elder Mother said that she was gonna go and lay down to get rid of her headache and Zane told her that she'll be the first one that she calls if anyone dies in the infirmary. River rolled up on Peter trying to make up, but Peter didn't fall for it and even even ratted him out when Daikon came around. He told him that River was trying to weasel his way into the highest trailer. And here, this is where Manny could have thrown him under the bus because Daikon questioned River about where he was during the shootout. And he told him that he ran into the woods and Manny vouched for him. And I don't know which side of the coin Manny is on. He flip flopping like a fish out of water these days. Now we move back to the trailer where the highest is explaining the climax of the Giovanni piece when Ruth told them that that wasn't really the best form of punishment for the cult members. It may be good for George and Lewis, but not everyone in the camp deserved to hear it. She told him that the men that died serving the Raku shouldn't have to listen to remnants over and over and over about them going to hell. And he wanted to know where they were, so Ruth took him to the back of the woods. The FBI made it in to see Keys, one of my favorite new characters. She said that she was hungry and Desiree said, okay, while you eat, you can answer my questions. They want her to talk, give up her partners in crime, you know, snitch. She said, okay, get me a New York steak and then we'll talk. She killed one of the FBI men, so they just can't let her go. They want her to talk, give up the other two guys that she was with and, you know, pay for her crime. Kyle thinks that the highest is up at the camp celebrating, but Desiree thinks that he's nervous and he's scared so she thinks that he's vulnerable so therefore he'll negotiate and she wants to be the negotiator she wants to go up there but kyle is totally against it and thinks that it's a bad idea so now Ruth and the Highest are going through the woods to see the fallen soldiers, and the Highest is already regretting being there because of the stench of the bodies. The Highest said that Obadiah loves him after Ruth said that she loves him, and this is how she knows just the right things to say to him. Obadiah loves the Highest? Why? <laughs> There's something more to their relationship that meets the eye, clearly. Then one of the cult members ran up to tell the Highest that her sister was badly wounded and that she wants the Highest to heal her. Y'all, <laughs> why does this remind us of the story in the Bible of Mary and Martha? Oh my gosh, no, hold on. It's Martha and Lazarus. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> but Ruth realized that this persona that the highest has of, of healing people is a boatload of crap. So she interrupted and told her that the highest doesn't have time to be healing everybody. And the highest turned around and got her all the way together. He told her, look, don't you ever interrupt me again. And I'll decide if I want to heal people or not. He told Martha, well, her name isn't really Martha, but anyway, he told her to prepare the altar and to bring her sister to the pavilion. He got to perform the miracle. Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, Shahai is, is so full of himself, like seriously. Now, Kyle is worried about his woman going up to the Raku camp without him. He's afraid that the highest is going to blow some purple dust in her face and have her walking around the camp with them to go beaties out. <laughs> just like he did Laura. Desiree told him not to worry, but that didn't stop him from calling someone on his cell phone to call in a favor. The soldiers bought in Lady Lazarus from the battleground, and Icon wanted to know what the hell was going on. Ruth told him what had happened, and Icon said, listen, if he don't heal Lady Lazarus, then he's gonna spaz out. He told her it was her problem and that she needed to clean it up. Then the highest came out, started performing the obituary, mixed in with a little bit of healing prayers, sprinkled with a whole lot of faith. He told the congregation that because of her sacrifice, that she would be healed. Then he started moving and waving his hands and popping his back like he had the Holy Ghost. Then Lady Lazarus started coughing. He waved his hands again. Then she coughed a little bit louder. I said, oh shit. <laughs> he healing her for real. <laughs> I started believing in myself. All hail to the Raku. <laughs> then they heard the helicopters flying overhead, right? And the highest, he was thinking, oh, that's a sign. Manny thinks it's the FBI. Maybe it's a little bit of both. And Desiree also heard the sirens go off on the compound. And it turns out that Kyle authorized this air support. But Desiree knows that the siren was echoing the sounds of death. And she was right, because now we see everybody getting ready to drink the Kool-Aid, even little Callie. And Ruth is calling Callie, Callie. Kelly trying to get her attention and Kelly goes oh no <laughs> my name is Ruby and if we all remember when Kelly first arrived at the compound Ruby was the name that the highest gave to her end scene this was another great episode guys another great episode just like I said in my review of episode number one the acting has improved a lot and I'm glad that these characters have some new goals to reach and yes they're all back on the compound and their return was a great way to to start the new season I mean if we think about it if they didn't go back to the compound then i wouldn't be here talking to you right now i mean we wouldn't have a show to talk about right but i did notice how a lot of the plots are now all fitting together nicely from scene to scene for instance how the highest not only told ruth how obadiah brainwashed the children but he showed her and i like that part i can appreciate that it really helps um to gel the story together right but that's all i have for episode two you guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up you know i'd appreciate it and if you're a fan of Tyler Perry's Ruthless, then go ahead and sub to this channel for more videos just like this one. Thanks once again for joining me here on Ruthless TV, and I'm going to see you on the next one.